Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In my last video I talked about XML files and how a lot of data is now stored in XML format uh, that you might want to use in a computer program. Um, and that turns out to be the case as well for another, for a device that uh, I happen to have that has lots of good XML data on it. I'm not in the market to sell anything, but I have a, a Garmin uh, 4Runner 305 here, and the Garmin uh, uh, devices um, record information about uh, hiking or walking or running or biking, and uh, they do it in XML format as well. I happen to have a sample of the data that you can collect from such a device, and here's that sample. Um, if we look at this, uh, this file, this is another example of an XML file that is created by, uh, by the Garmin device in this case. And it happens to be a training center database uh, file here. Um, if we look at some of the data that's within this file, it's in XML format again, and, and we would, could use a, an XML parser to, uh, to read the information. Um, and we have all the same kind, we have tags the way that we, uh, that we, we saw in the last video for XML. So um, I could look at, for example, the, uh, the total time in, uh, in seconds um, at some point uh, during a, a workout. Um, I can certainly look at, at heart rate, which is uh, in this value tag here, um, this value element that I've got. I've got cadence information for, um, for a bicycle in this case um, to, uh, uh, that's recorded. So I've got lots of information that's in XML format, and I've got one additional piece of information about which type of sport I was engaging in when this data was collected and that is called an attribute. An attribute appears within a tag, within an XML tag, and it always starts out with some name being equal to some value. So this is, a, this is a, um, an attribute within an XML tag, and we can get that attribute information as well from an XML file, and I'd like to show you um, how that might be done. Now, the, it turns out that the attributes, in fact there can be more than one attribute for a tag, but the attributes of a tag are recorded as a dictionary by the, uh, by the XML parser. So we can get at that information from the Minidom parser by accessing that, uh, that dictionary. So I'm going to start up Wing here and I'm going to write some code that is going to go ahead and uh, and access that data within that uh, within that uh, file, and um, we'll just go ahead and and um, let's see here. So I want to be able to look at that file here. We're going to keep that handy so we can look at it as we're uh, as we're writing our code here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'll bring that back over. Okay, so we'll take. We'll keep that handy so we can switch back to it when we need to. So, again, to read from an XML file, I'm going to say from xml.dom uh, import mini DOM. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, parse the XML file. So I'll call it XML doc again for lack of something better to call it. And uh, that's going to be mini DOM.parse. And the name of this file is uh, biking uh, three. Let's take a look again. I guess I've, I'm not completely certain. So it's uh, biking three 15 2012 biking three 15 2012.tcx. So I've read in the complete file here. Um, to parse it. Just so you know, if you had a really large file, it might not be the case that you'd want your parser to read the entire file, the entire XML file, into memory. Um, this Minidom parser does read the entire XML file into memory. There are other Minidom, or there are other XML parsers that are available that would only read a part at a time, but to keep things simple, we're just going to go ahead and read the whole file. 
This one happens, this file happens to have just one um, activity in it, um, but there is the, the capability within these Garmin Training Center databases to have all your or many activities within a file. So, okay, so we've read that in and uh, we've parsed it, and now we need to know what, um, what, how to parse this file. There is a Training Center database tag that starts here at the beginning and it extends to the end of the file. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get that Training Center database. So I'm just going to call it Training Center database. We'll just call it TCD here. And from the XML doc, I'm going to do a get elements by tag name again. And I want to get the Training Center database tag from that XML file. And if I go back here and look, sure enough, that's spelled exactly the same way for both of them. Within that, I want to go ahead and get the activity tags um, within that training center database. And I'm going to call that activities because I'm going to get a list of them. And uh, that's going to be equal to tcd.getElements by tag name. Actually, I think I need to be careful here. There is an activities tag, so I think I'm going to call this the activities um, element here just so that we make sure that we see that that's one element that we're getting. So tcd.getElements by tag name, and it is the activities tag that I'm getting, and sub zero. So that would be a list of all the activities tags but there is only one of those in the whole file. If I were to scan through here, it's quite a large file, so I'm not sure I want to go through the entire thing, but there's one activities tag within this file. And if I, did, if I wasn't familiar with that, I'd certainly have to go and verify to that to make sure that that was the case. So that's the activities element, and from that activities element, we're going to get the activity tags. So now I'm going to do activities is equal to um, from the activities element I'm going to do a get elements by tag name to get the activity tags so now I have a list of all the activity tags and I can go through that list for activity in activities and I can go ahead and get information from them. So here's where I'd like to find out what my activity is. And I think I'm going to print out not only the activity, but the date that the activity was uh, um, uh, performed on as well. To do that, I'm going to go and import date time. So I'm going to say uh, uh, um, from date time import. And I guess I can import anything that I want here. Um, I'm just going to import star in this case. By importing star, I'm going to get everything that's in the date time module right into the code that I'm working with here. So you can kind of see I'm doing two imports up there. Okay, so I want to get that sport name out of this attribute there. And the activity element has a dictionary with all of those attributes in it. And so I'm going to write sport equals, and it's coming from the activity element, and it's called the attributes field within that activity element. So we're going to get the attributes field, and that again is a dictionary of all of the um, attributes in that element. There happens to only be one attribute in that element, in this case sport, and so if I want to get the, the sport from that attributes, I'm going to do a left bracket to provide my key, and I'm going to write sport there as my key into my dictionary. So I'll get the sport attribute out of the attributes element here. Now sport, the sport that comes back is actually a key value pair that comes back. There are two parts to it. Um, the key part of it is called the name, and the value part of this, uh, val this thing that I've got here, this attribute, is the thing that it maps to. So the sport name 
is really equal to sport.value. So again, sport is a key value pair. If I want the value out of it, I just do uh, dot value. If I wanted the key part of it, I would do dot name to get the key part of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and print this just so we can see how this, uh, how this works at this point. I, again, I have one activity in this file, so I expect to see biking printed to the screen. Um, and there, biking is printed to the screen. So again, if I had a larger file, it would print all the different activities that I did in this training center database. This just happens to be a smaller file that I'm working with, just making it a little more convenient to, uh, to understand. Okay, so I'd also like to print the time um, of this exercise, and that time, the time is actually recorded right here. Um, that's the time of the activity. And um, if I were to go look down here, there's other information that might be useful to, to look at eventually as well. Um, just to understand a little bit about this XML file, this is the time when the activity started. And there is lots of information that is recorded as the t activity progresses. So for instance, um, here is the first track point that appears within this file and it starts here and it goes down to here. These track points are recorded every just every few seconds um, and you can see here that in fact the difference between this the time of this track point and the next one is one second. Um, the track point has recorded within it some location information from the GPS uh, longitude and latitude. It has an altitude that's recorded um, it has a distance that has been uh, traversed since the beginning of the activity. Um, it has heart rate information, uh, 100 beats per minute, and cadence information since this is a biking, uh, a biking um, uh, activity. You can see here's the next track point, and um, again the cadence was uh, missing at this point. My heart was beating 100 beats per minute uh, towards the beginning of this workout. Um, Again, cadence was missing. We have lots of these track points going on here in the file. Um, here we have heart rates dropped a little bit, cadence is missing. Eventually we're going to get down to a point in here where the cadence, there we go, cadence is 95 this time. Don't know why it says absent there in, in, uh, in this case. Um, that may be, it may be that that sensor state uh, is talking about some other sensor um, and that's why it's saying absent in each of these cases but here we have a non-zero cadence anyway so so there's lots of good information in this file now I've got the sport name I'm gonna work with uh, the time as well here let's take a look at the time just to see how I would uh, split this up so I want to work with this time and split it up so that I have the pieces of it and um, that is actually in this ID tag which is inside the activity tag so I'm gonna go ahead and get that information I'm gonna get the uh, the ID element which is gonna be equal to from the activity I'm gonna do a get elements by tag name and I'm gonna get ID the ID tag so if I take a look at that again here, switching back to it, it's the ID tag, and then I've got the string, and if I want from the ID element, if I want that time, I'm just going to say that the uh, time of day is equal to, um, actually I'll spell it out here, time of day, so it's a little easier to understand what's going on, and that's coming from the ID element, and it's the uh, dot first child. Oh, I have to remember to do sub zero back here so that I get just the first ID element dot first child dot data to get the information. So time of day is a string. It looks like this. I've got year in the first four characters, then month, then day, and then I've got hour, minutes, and seconds in Zulu time there. So um, let's go ahead and 
take some pieces of that information. So let's get the year first. Year is going to be equal to time of day, and I'm going to go from 0 to 3, but I have to specify 4 if I want. So I'm going to take a slice of it to get the, uh, the year there. And you know what? I'm just going to do an int of that since that's going to be an integer. Um, then there's a dash. If I look at this again, there's a dash following that. So starting at position 5 and going for two places is going to be the month. So I'm going to say month is equal to int of time of day. And I'm going to start at position 5 and I'm going to go to position uh, 7 for two places there. And then uh, day is going to be equal to, and again if I look at it here, my day is the next two characters after a dash, so I'm going to stop at, uh, I'm going to start at 8, int of time of day, starting at position 8, going to position 10 for 2 again. Um, okay, so I can create a uh, date time object now I could say that my date uh, uh, is equal to um, a date time object where I'm going to provide the year and the month and the day and then I'm going to go ahead and move this print statement at this point and we'll move it down here and we'll print the sport name and we'll print the date. So we'll give this a try here. And there we have it, 2-12-03-14. You can see the rest of the date is all zeros at this point. I really should put in the hours and the minutes and the seconds and I would do that uh, by slicing it up again and taking the different converting the different portions to integers as well. So we've seen here in an XML file how to go ahead and get at an attribute that is within a tag within the XML file. Um, we have another example of parsing an XML file here uh, where we get some elements out of it. Um, if we look at the two together we can kind of match up what's going on here and, and what pieces we're getting. We start out by reading in the, the whole file getting the Trading Center database tag. There's going to be one of them, so we'll just do sub-0 to get just one of them. Then we got the activities tag and sub-0 to get the first activities tag. And then we got the activity tags that were within that activities element. So, um, and we'll call that activities, and then we can do for activity in activities there. And, uh, and then for each of those activity tags, we got the sport, um, out of the attributes and this is the new thing that we learned about that there is this attributes field that is a part of an element so that we can get the attributes out of out of an element um, and we provide as a key to that dictionary the name of the attribute and we get back a pair uh, that has both the name and the value and if we want the value we have to do sport.value in this case to get the sport name. Um, and then we see one more example here of slicing up a date time object or a date from the file and creating a date time object that we can go ahead and work with within our program. That's it for this one and I, uh, I hope you've learned a little bit more about XML files and how to access attributes of elements within an XML file.